Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for tonight's main event here in Houston, Texas, between Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who's 25 years of age, and Peter Manfredo, 30 years of age, height advantage for Chavez Jr. They both made the 160-pound weight limit. You can see on our unofficial scale, Chavez Jr. rehydrated to 179 pounds, Manfredo to 178. A lot of energy in the arena as we get set for tonight's main event and heading to the ring first, the pride of Providence, Peter Manfredo. Amateur resume, 165 bouts, turned pro September the 22nd of 2000, 247 rounds in the ring. He'll turn 31 next week. Max, it's not often that a guy makes a declaration that this is could be it if I don't win. Yeah, but he's realistic about the fact that he's in a union and uh, you work. If you have a job in a union and you work all year, you're not getting punched in the head and you're likely to make more money than if you're fighting on fringe kind of cable shows or not on TV at all. This is his third shot on HBO. He knows he has to make good. And after he lost to Saki Obika, thought he was done with boxing and he went to watch a Manny Pacquiao pay-per-view at his grandmother's house and he had the midnight sweep at an arena in Providence and as he was sweeping the corridors he said what am I doing I got to give this one more shot well he's a competent fighter with a lot of heart and uh, it's not as though he's fighting an unbeatable fighter tonight And led by his father, the great Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. makes his entrance into the arena. Had a majority decision win against Sebastian Zbik back in June in California to win a portion of the middleweight championship. Well, he still comes under some criticism, though, about his training habits, and some say, well, oh, maybe he doesn't work as hard as he could. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that. Uh, maybe because for a guy to be able to sacrifice and put himself down and wait to wait and rehydrate 20 pounds over a 24-hour period, he has to be doing something right in the gym. So I think that's probably things that will make him from his past. We also saw him fight 12 very hard rounds against Sebastian Sabit here on Boxing After Dark, and Roy, he fought hard all 12 rounds. All 12 rounds. <laughs> With Chavez Jr. and Manfredo in the ring as Chavez Jr. makes the first defense of his 160-pound title. Now for the introductions, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Y a todos nuestros amigos latinos, bienvenidos aficionados a box. Well, fans, we welcome you to the Reliant Arena here in Houston, Texas, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated in association with Sanfer Promotions, Debella Entertainment, and Tecate Cerveza con Carácter. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. President Jose Suleiman, supervisor, is Claude Jackson. Along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the executive director is William Kuntz. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, from London, England, Mark Green, from Caracas, Venezuela, Nicolas Hidalgo, and from Dickinson, Texas, Gail Van Hoy. Our third man of the ring, our referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Houston, it's time for the main event of the evening. 
Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim, hailing from Providence, Rhode Island. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds with a record of 37 wins, six losses. He has 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked at WBC number four middleweight contender and tonight making his second attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's pride of Providence, introducing Peter Manfredo Jr. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion. On my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold trunks with red trim, representing his hometown of Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. He weighed in at 159 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 43 wins, no losses, one draw and one no contest with 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the first defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, the legend continues. La leyenda continua con el joven ídolo de Culiacán. Here is the undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, introducing Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Once again, a referee in charge now to give instructions, Lawrence Cole. All right, gentlemen, we were over things earlier in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves all times. Touch them up, bueno suerte, play Olympia. Well, Mexican fans paid attention to Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. because who, who his daddy is and was. But they root for him because of the way he fights. Manfredo wants this to be a fight he'll be remembered for. There's a real possibility here. Well, Manfredo says that Chavez is good, but he's not great. And by his own admission, he realizes that he's not great. But he feels that his will and determination for 12 rounds will work in his favor. Underway, round number one. Well, I gotta say, I'm impressed with uh, Manfredo's beginning, uh, his, his, the beginning of his fight for him, because he said he's gonna match Chavez Jr. with the weight gain, and I'd be dog if he didn't match him. <laughs> he did, on an unofficial scale. Manfredo's been down once in his career. Back in 07, Jeff Lacey knocked him down in the fourth round. Eight first round knockouts for Chavez Jr. In fact, more than half of his career knockouts, 16 of his 30, have come within the first two rounds. Boy, how do you think Manfredo looks having put on all that weight? Looks pretty good to me, you know. I mean, he looks very balanced, very focused. We'll have to see how he takes Chavez's punch because I heard him complain about how hard Beaker hit him. He says sometimes he still wakes up feeling the effects of the Beaker punches, but I don't think Chavez is a light punch himself. Good body attack by Chavez Jr. Now Freddie Roach talked about working on the defense, the reach and the range in the gym. And he kind of left it hanging there when he said in the gym. So I asked him, are you concerned about the fact that when the fight breaks out, he might revert? He said, well, we don't want to take his willingness away to engage. It's still a work in progress. He places those punches, Roy, the left hook to the body, Chavez Jr. Yeah, just like just like he did, and he's boxing beautifully right now, though. But like I said, as a middleweight, he has to box a little differently because these guys are going to take a little more, and it's going to take a little more to get him out of there. So he's boxing beautifully right now with jab, stepping to the left, using the hook off the jab. Well, neither guy is landing much. Chavez with one or two hooks to the body. He landed one good hook to the head, and I think that has gained Peter Manfredo's respect for it. I'm going to At least two minutes in, according to CompuBox, Manfredo has landed just two punches. The Chavez is four. I don't know. I think I saw, I, I, I've seen, I think, Manfredo touch him with a jab a little more than that. Could be wrong. Touched him there. Big difference in punching power here. Hey, boy, get up, get up. 
still feeling each other out. The fight hasn't really broken out yet. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up, especially coming off the Pacquiao Marquez three fight match so many times. You know, that first, the first round is a feeling out round, but the judges usually score it one way or another, and it counts just as much as the eighth round. Well, there's so much on the line in, in, a, in a fight like Pacquiao and Marquez, or like in this fight for these guys, that you generally don't see huge action in the first round. It's one of the reasons everyone still remembers Hagler and Hearns. In the opening bell, they went at it. And the round number one. Relax. Relax. here. Okay, or if you keep it over there, you gotta come up with the uppercut through the middle. Okay, or it'll set up your left uppercut, okay? Nice little combinations. Keep the jab on. The jab did a nice job that round, right? It was close. Close round, Peter, okay? I got it. Let me out, let me out, let me out. And we begin round number two for Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Peter Manfredo. Chavez Jr. lands 11 of 32, according to the copy box. Manfredo 6 of 44. Chavez digs in with some power shots, partially blocked by Manfredo. Manfredo doubles up his jab to come back. Yeah, Manfredo cannot back straight back from Chavez because Chavez's reach is a lot lower than he is. It's very apparent out here. Chavez Sr. was one of the greatest fighters who ever lived. So it's not an equal comparison, but there are some things, Roy, he does so much like his daddy, Jr. Uh, the body shots are the main thing, but I'm telling you right now, you just jab, step to the left, and hooking off his jab. These are not things that we saw his father have to use much. His father was good at it when he needed it, but he didn't use it as much as this kid is right now. What I mean is his father, like his father, he's so calm with all the action flying by his head, all the chaos, he stays calm and places his shots very well. And that's why I say I think he's on a better path than people want to give him credit for. I think he's a much better fighter because he's so cool on the pressure, just like his daddy. And he also is working with one of the best trainers in the sport, Freddie Roach. Without boxing Manfredo in this round. Follows up with a right hand to the ear of Manfredo. The, the biggest difference here is when they gained the 19 and 20 pounds, uh, Manfredo is just not a big puncher anyway, so you can't really tell it in his punches, but you definitely can tell it in Chavez Jr.'s punches. He looks like a bigger specimen here. And just like that, you hit a thump in his punches. Also that block by Manfredo. But Chavez, as Roy said, is hitting them with these spreading shots that can make a difference even when they land on the arms and gloves. They, they don't count for nothing. They count for something. <laughs> Manfredo stepped in with a combination of good defense by Chavez to avoid the rush. And Manfredo looks like he's throwing punches tentatively. Combination, counter shot by Chavez. Taps Manfredo to the body. You almost said exactly what Manfredo told us. Manfredo told us, I mean, he told us that he was, he's basically a made fighter, but Chavez is basically a born fighter. So fluent, so calm. Manfredo has to try extra, extra hard to make it happen. And, and believe me, he ain't gonna get any favors on the judges' cards here. <laughs> uh, he knows that. Oh. Nice combination by Chavez to end oh, round number two. Not that he didn't just get a boxing lesson, because he did just then. <laughs> Jab. You're using your jab, but there's no right hands, no combinations coming off of it. Okay? You're gonna whip your combinations off your jab. 
You understand what I'm saying? Work your combinations off your jab, then move your head. Look to keep him there when he's against the ropes. Don't look to stay in front of him too long. Come on, baby. Right here you see Manfredo coming forward, and Chavez has a one-two, a beautiful right hand on the top of Manfredo's jab. Then he does another jab going out. A beautiful straight right hand, very hard punch for Manfredo Jr. to be, I mean, for Manfredo Jr. to be taken. And there's Sergio Martinez, who is the guy back who is the middleweight champion. Yep. And you have the two best fighters in the division in terms of a threat to him are Gennady Golovkin and Dmitry Pirog. Neither one of them have much of a fan base here. They're European fighters. Golovkin, once he gets his promotional situation straightened out, will look to make a run at middleweight. He's a highly decorated amateur and an undefeated professional and a very good pressure fighter. Pirog, we've seen knock out Danny Jacobs. And then Chavez here is the money man in the division. Has a huge following and a famous last name. And he ain't that bad. And he's a big middleweight. So got, they, they put not underestimated. <laughs> you have guys like Macklin, who a lot of people feel was robbed against Sturm in their fight. Could be a potential opponent for Martinez. Good thumping right hand by Chavez. But everyone wants to fight Chavez Jr. here because they feel he's beatable and it means a lot of money. Might not be as easy to beat as people think, huh? Yeah, right? you know, and I think Manfredo, just looking at his face, um, I think he's gained the respect for Chavez. He didn't think he was that special, but right now he's making Manfredo reconsider. Well, it's like I said, you can tell that Manfredo is a built fighter, like he said, and Chavez is more of a born fighter. Well, they say you can teach a guy to box, but you can't teach him to fight. And Chavez Jr. knows how to fight, and it looks like Freddie Roach is teaching him how to box. Exactly. But you gotta get Manfredo an A for heart because he's definitely trying his hardest. Oh, good Ooh, shot. Both shot. Both fighters. Yeah, they both land good shots. Chavez comes back with a shot to the head. Manfredo goes to the body. Manfredo trying to push Chavez a little bit more. Chavez has done a good job countering. Moving away. The really bad news for Manfredo is he's found that he can't really box with Chavez. He's the smaller guy. He's not the money guy, meaning, as we know, the judges aren't going to do him any favors. And Chavez takes a good punch. A very good punch. So what does Manfredo do? Tape job on the glove of Manfredo. This never works though because the gloves get wet and they try to put more of that white tape on. Cut the tape off rather than add more. Chavez thumps a right hand at the end of that exchange. Manfredo a little late. That's it, son. That's it, babe. Good. Very good, very good. Straighten your legs. Very good. Okay. You lay it right here and over. Let Jeff recover, okay? Here you see Chavez stick that jab by holding him off, 
Bam, come over the top with the right hand, right over the top of Manfredo's left. Then he come back again and counters the left jab, boom, with a right hand over the top. And then right here, finally, you see Manfredo land this one, two down the middle, which boom, boom, the right hand that gets countered with a beautiful left hook right up. Gotta be discouraging to try everything you can to hit a guy. When you do hit him, he still knocks the hell out of you. From a Reliant Arena in Houston, Texas. Bob Popper, Roy Jones, Max Kellerman, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Peter Manfredo begin round four. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. I've got it 30 to 27, 3 to nothing. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Bob, he's circling, he's keeping a perfect distance from Manfredo, and he's beating him up. I mean, he's using that ring beautifully. Circles to the right, circles to the left, stays away from Manfredo. Manfredo has to get in and make this a dog fight. It's the only way he can score. And he's not doing it. Julio's banging them all over the place. Look at this. Well, Manfredo's getting inside there. But anyway, three to nothing based on real good ring generalship and clean punches. No doubt Chavez won the second and the third by a wide margin. First round, maybe. Uh, here, Manfredo's making it a dog fight, like Harold said, Roy, but Chavez might be winning the dog fight, too. Yeah, yep. and Manfredo's losing the steam, but his punch is really bad now. Punches are wider, too, from Manfredo. Chavez much sharper. Manfredo digs it right and left to the body. Good body shot, though. Very good body shot. At a very great time. So what does Manfredo do, Roy? Do what he said, make it a dog fight and dig to the body like he just did, but he got to continue to dig to the body. He can't be a target like he is right there. Good right hand to the body, right upstairs by Manfredo. That's what he has to do. He got to make it a dog fight, but he got to go to the body, and he can't give Chavez a shot. Chavez, oh, good shot by Manfredo. This is a very, very good round, big yeah. action round. Very good hook by Manfredo. The Chavez started off fast in the first 45 seconds, but Manfredo has turned the tables a bit. You gotta go back to the body, though. He's steadily going to the head. You can't beat a puncher by trying to put your head with him. He's too strong and he takes a great punch. Roundhouse right to the ear of Manfredo. This is part of the reason that the fans love Chavez Jr. Even when he's controlling the action boxing, he's a fighter at heart. He wants to mix it up, and if the guy hits him, he'll go in the trenches with him. It's in his DNA, sir. Manfredo missed an opportunity there to go to the body again. This is a great opportunity to bang the body. In a dog fight like, like this, you have to bang the body. See right there, he's throwing all the head shots. These needs to be big body shots. Yeah, because the thing that turned the momentum his way, at least momentarily, was that combination to the body. That's exactly right. You see Chavez not throwing many punches this round either because of that great body shot. But what he's going to do is let Chavez recollect himself. This is going to be a problem. That was another good body shot by Manfredo. And Chavez threw a great right hand at him right there, but he missed it. That was a good body shot by Manfredo. And he knows it now. See that? And he got Chavez's nose bleeding. Oh, they exchange to end round four. Quite a round. Excellent round. Tune in Friday, December 2nd at 9 p.m. for 24-7 overtime. Cotto Margarito, Jim Lampley, Max Kellerman, Emmanuel Stewart will be on hand to put the finishing touches on 24-7 with the help of some familiar faces from the series. Join Jim, Max, and Emmanuel again on Saturday at 5.15 for Fight Day Now. A one-hour special packed with guest features and in-depth analysis. It's all part of the countdown toward that night's 154-pound championship between Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarito on HBO pay-per-view. Okay, move the head when you're done with the punches, okay? Whip that little defense and fire with counters behind it. Let's go. Can you turn to me for a second, please? Just don't get Let's fucking go, lazy. Let's go, guys. Move that. There you go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Again, round number five. Round four, the best round to this point in the fight where both fighters had their moments. For the third consecutive round, Chavez landed 50 plus percent of his power punches. Why is Manfredo found it easier to land a straight right way? Because he's been landing the body shots, which brings the hands down. So now he's landing the body shots, so he's countering the jab. It makes it a little, a little more, more difficult for Chavez to avoid or he lose the right hand. And he's keeping the pressure on him and back him up like that. Oh, 
Davis try that lead uppercut that was short. Always a dangerous way to start a sequence. Left hand from Manfredo. Manfredo started to take the play away from Chavez in the last round for the first time in this fight. But as you see, he hasn't landed a big body shot in this round yet. That's the key to victory for him. Good right hand there. Which, but, but in this round, Chavez still has punched less than he did in the second and third. Manfredo with a left to the body after a left to the head. He's a little tired probably because he's not used to this. Good right hand. Oh, oh Manfredo's hurt. Got hit with the right hand. Chavez steps in. Punches firing away. Lawrence called the referee taking a close look. Manfredo's in big trouble and he's not holding on. Chavez unleashing a left hand. I don't think. And Lawrence that, Cole has stopped that, it. That's a bad stoppage. That is a bad stoppage. You know they're in Texas. Chavez is winning the fight. Manfredo is hurt. But you could see that Lawrence Cole was itching to jump in and stop that fight. <laughs> I do not think Manfredo was defenseless. But Max, Manfredo did absolutely nothing to defend himself. He, was, he didn't hold on and he wasn't throwing punches he back. He was avoiding punches. He wasn't getting hit that cleanly that often. And at the, as the fight was being stopped, he was holding Chavez. Needless to say, we'll bring you the replays. Harold, your thoughts? I tell you, that's a good stoppage. I mean, I hate to see this crap where referees don't know a guy is hurt and they let it go on too long. Lawrence Cole jumped in absolutely at the right time. This kid could have got seriously hurt. We saw how big Julio was. He was landing the hardest shots for four or five rounds. For God's sake, Manfredo was getting the crap kicked out of him. Uh, Lawrence Cole did a very, very good I'll job this. jumping him in and saving him. I'm, I'm with, with, I'm with you, Harold. Carried out. All right, let's take a look at the replay, Max, and let's, yep. and Roy, let's take a look at it. Well, you see him coming right there with that two. That hurt, that hurt him really, really bad. He had been hurting the whole fight. Chavez put the pressure on him. When Chavez put the pressure on him, the referee was giving him time here to do something. The referee was watching very closely, giving him time. He's steadily not doing nothing. He's not punching back. He didn't grab, he didn't hold, and the referee sees right there that he's basically out of the fight. But the referee did exactly the right thing, jumped in this time. He tried to hold, but he waited too long to step in the hole. So the referee did exactly what he should have done. Let me say this. I will agree that it's always better to err on the side of caution. I don't think Manfredo was out of the fight. I think he was holding at the time of the stoppage. We just saw Angulo Kirkland, where Angulo punched himself out trying to finish Kirkland, and Kirkland came back in the fight. But if I'm overruled ringside, so be it. <laughs> I must say, it's a fair point that you bring up, and it will be discussed. Official time of the stoppage, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 52 seconds in round number five. A referee in charge, Lawrence Cole, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the WBC middleweight champion of the world, El Joven Idolo de Culiacan, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Win number 44, 31st stoppage, 152 of round number five. Chavez over Manfredo. As we take a look at the final punch stats and total punches in the fight, you see that Manfredo was actually busier. Chavez sharper, landing at 44%. Power shots, a key in this fight. We take a look at those numbers, 61 of 117 for Chavez, 52%. Manfredo 33 of 136, 24%. I should add that Chavez also landed 36 of his jabs, 37 of 104. So now we look at punch zone and take a look at the target area and where the punches were landed. Landed on Chavez, you see 14 body shots to the left by Manfredo. Manfredo took 82 shots to the head. Problem for Manfredo, he had success when he went to the body, but he only connected 14 times in the fight. Let's send it up to Max Kellerman with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. <laughs> okay, I think that's the best we've seen you box. Talk, tell us about it. Dile que tengo trabajando mucho en eso. Me costó un poquito de trabajo porque es algo nuevo para mí. 
pero creo que lo hice bien para hacer la primera vez. I've been working at it a lot. It cost. Uh, it, it took me a little time to get into it, for, because it's the first time. But we've been working on it. What do you mean the first time? Es la primera vez que boxeo, que trabajo más mi defensiva. Hemos trabajado en eso y creo que me resultó bien. First time focusing on boxing and focusing on the defense, and I think it worked out well. First round was slow. Then you boxed extremely well in the second and third. Then it looked like he kind of got you in a slugfest in the fourth. That's why the fans love you, not only because you win, but because of the way you win. What do you do about balancing that urge with the fact that you were boxing well? Dile que yo sabía que al final de cuenta iba a terminar peleando como siempre peleo porque esa es mi esencia, pero trabajé un poco más mi defensiva y creo que combiné las dos cosas y eso es mejor para mí. I knew that in the long haul we were going to fight, we were going to brawl because that's my essence. But after all, I boxed a little bit more because that's the best thing for me. What now? You have a big following, you sell tickets. A lot of people want to fight you, including the recognized champion, Sergio Martinez. There's a potential fight with Canelo Alvarez. What do you want? Bueno, yo quiero pelear con los mejores. Me gustaría pelear. Yo respeto, quiero aclarar aquí, respeto a Sergio Martínez, es un gran campeón. El Canelo quisiera pelear con él para darle gusto a toda la gente mexicana. Pero el que manda es mi promotor. Yo tengo que hacer lo que él me diga, pero yo no le tengo miedo a nadie. I want to fight the best. Sergio Martínez is a great champ. Canelo would be a great fight for the Mexican public, but it all depends on what my promoter says. I fear no one. Congratulations on an excellent performance. Look forward to seeing you soon. Muchas gracias. Gracias a todos por venir. Arriba México! Peter, you said you were going to uh, stop fighting if it didn't go your way. What are your thoughts right now? Yeah, done. Didn't go my way. I'm not an HBO fighter, I guess. Every time I step up to the plate on HBO, I lose. But he caught me with a good shot. You know, I was in the game and, uh, you know, trying to figure one a little bit, we're getting better, again close, again close, he caught me with a good shot. Ringside, I thought the stoppage looked quick. I was overruled by everybody else who thought it was a good one. What are your thoughts? That was quick, but what are you going to do? This is boxing. Yeah, I'm in his hometown over here. Mexico, this is like Mexico City for him, so what are you going to do? You know, I knew what I was coming in against, and this is part Here it is, Peter, can you describe it? <clears throat> he was hitting me with some shots, you know, he called me, I was trying to make a miss, trying to make a pay, I grabbed on like I'm supposed to do. I'm not used to doing that, grabbing on, but I did. And uh, they stopped it. I mean, they didn't give me a chance, but I knew that coming in, I had to uh, put on a good performance, and if I got hurt, I had to, I had to fight. Uh, obviously, if you've seen the Calzaghe fight, they didn't give me a chance. And then obviously, this tonight, they didn't give me a shot. So, but it's, he called me with a good shot. You know what I mean? He won. I disagree with you about the Calzaghe fight, but I agree with you about this one. <laughs> Congratulations on an excellent career, Peter, if that is a career. Bob, 